Glad to have you join us on this edition of the show. We simply need to fix our power sector. Because the truth is, how can you run a 21st century digital driven economy without adequate power supply? We certainly have to find newer, more effective ways to confront this challenge that seem not to be disappearing in a hurry. My guest on the show shares his thoughts on the issue and how technology can help. This and more coming up right after some tech news and updates. I am Chukomeka Agbata, and this is Tech Trends. In tech, you create the foundation. Even sometimes, if it doesn't work, you take that same developmental idea and use it to apply to a different area. A team of young Nigerian schoolgirls have created an application that can help less privileged children go to school. Hands Out is a fundraising app. So to start the app, it says touch the hand to reach out. So you just touch the hand like the circle in the hand and then it then reaches out. So you click on donate and you click on if you want to donate clothing items, funds, school bag, textbooks, hospital bills, or school fees. And I, for example, want to donate school or um, clothing items so i click on clothing items and it, sh it says shoes size and quantity and when i click on the size like if i so i click on size and it brings out age two to three four to seven etc etc so i will click on 10 to 12 and it says the quantity and i clicked on 30 and for bags it says the size and I want to click on 14 and above and quantity, I click on 50 to 100. So it, it goes like that. And for books and stationery, you have class, you have the class. And for class, I want to click year six, the quantity 100 and above. For stationery, class 14 and above. For quantity 100 and above. And then when you are done, it takes you, then you just click donate. And he says, thank you and God bless you. This is the user interface of our app where we designed the home screen and the how and the colors, the logo, the where we input the buttons and everything else. The girls between the ages of 10 and 11 call themselves the Brain Squad. According to UNICEF, over 10 million children are out of school in Nigeria due to a series of problems like poverty. And this, they say, was their inspiration. When we created this app, we were thinking of the Itafadi kids, which, which their school collapsed, and the story of success Adago that she deserved to be beaten rather than sent out of school and her story became a success and we want other children to, to also have the same opportunity that she has right now. So what does the app do? When you go into our app, you can pay children's school fees, pay their hospital bills, donate stationery, school shoes, school bags, school textbooks for the children. And this, this works when, when you go into our app, you donate the quantity, how much, you, how, how much you want to donate. When people donate these things through our app, it makes them feel like they matter and their future is bright. But the girls didn't have it easy. What was it like for them? One of the challenges we, we faced while creating this app was that before, we used an app called Scratch to create mini games but then when we, when we decided to create this app called Hands Out, we had to use MIT App Inventor 
and although they are similar apps they still have different functions like for instance in MIT App Inventor you have your list picker you have your buttons where you put where you put for each button there is a coding behind it so for every button you put you have to code with your blocks and we had to learn this also we didn't have enough time because we also had to sacrifice some of our schoolwork time to focus on the app the girls have won the regional category of the Technovation Challenge and are working on improving the app to win the final rounds in Silicon Valley. According to their proprietress, the girls are poised to win. When the idea was muted that they should um, actually take part in this competition, I don't think they had an idea of how much work they had to put in. When they found out it was a challenge, because they found themselves missing out on things that other classmates were doing. And so every step of the way we negotiated extra time. And um, it got to a point then when they found out that, you know, the success of actually achieving something superseded the effort. And so it got a lot easier. I think for them, they have done very well. It's made them extremely confident about their own abilities. And I think that in the future, taking on new challenges will not be such a difficult thing for them to do. Also, it helped them to define the kind of career path that they want to pursue in future. Because what they have seen is that at the end of the day, technology is at the bedrock of most careers. And so they're already defining their tomorrow with technology in mind and I think that is a very positive thing for 10 and 11 year old children. Brain Squad is partnering with other organizations to open a trust to handle all cash donations and are looking to partner with more to assist with logistics of non-cash donations to designated communities. For the girls, this is part of their contribution to solving some of the pressing problems faced in the society. Hands Out is a hub for children by children where donor funds can be directed to the children who need it using charities. Scientists in Switzerland have developed a system which allows people with severely impaired motor functions, such as quadriplegia, to use video games using only the power of their brain. Samuel Kunz, who was paralyzed after an accident, uses the brain-computer interface to control an avatar through a race course in a specially designed computer game called Brain Driver. The ultimate aim of the research is to develop technology to control devices such as wheelchairs for those with a limited ability to move. Kunz, who has taken part in the trial, is able to pilot the digital race car using only his brain signals transmitted to a computer via electrodes placed on his head. So these electrodes are connected to an amplifier and then to the computer uh, and to our algorithms in the end. The algorithms are then calculating um, the brain signal and sending commands to the game that, that our pilot can actually control. I'm trying to improve every, every day. Um, I'm moving my, my fingers, my, my feet, all, all day long just to, to relax because I can't really feel them anymore but in my mind I can still control them and so I, I move them all the time actually. Dr. Ria Lena, a neuroscientist, adds that Kuhns is training his mind by imagining certain actions which are then translated into signals to control the race car. Thinking about moving his left hand makes the car turn left thinking about moving his right hand turns the car right and moving both together makes the car go straight. A Ford command, fully relaxing and clearing his mind, slows the car down. Kuhn said it has taken a lot of practice to train his mind to control the game, which will be made even more difficult in a stadium full of people. He will be among those taking part in a special championship next year called Cyberthlon, 
in which people with physical disabilities compete against each other using state-of-the-art technology. Um, I'm trying to, to move my, my hand, my fingers, um, in, just in my mind, so I have to be very concentrated. Um, and as um, the connection between my fingers and my, my, my brain is, is not, not there anymore, I still try to, 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 to move my fingers in my, just in my head. And so uh, that needs a lot of concentration to do it exactly the same way every time. So what we actually need for a brain-computer face is an amplifier, a cap with electrodes which actually measure SEMI's or our pilot's brain signals. The brain signal is a very, very small signal and muscle activity is a very, very strong signal. So we need to make sure that we filter out any muscle activity, but what we have left is the pure brain signal. So, Sammy, you know the drill. So yep. we put now the EEG cap on. It'll be pretty tight to have a good first contact. Please leave his eyes uncovered. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I need that. <laughs> <laughs> ETH, Zurich's professor for neural control of movement, Nicole Wenderot, explained that their biggest challenge is decoding the complex brain signals using non-invasive sensors. But, she said, the next generation of technology will probably mean sensors and electrodes implanted directly into the brain. The skull is a very good insulator and of course it also it protects your brain, that's a good thing, but it also protects the signals that your brain is producing from us we want to read them. So the next generation technology will somehow find a way around this problem. And that might mean that we are not measuring through the skull anymore, but that we are measuring inside the skull. So that we might implant sensors and electrodes into the brain. In the Cybathlon Brain Driver event, Four participants will compete in a race and will be able to see the position of their avatar and the competing avatars. The first participant to cross the finish line wins the race with a time limit of four minutes. Subscribing to a particular YouTube channel is only one side of the coin. The flip side is that if you don't specifically request for notifications, you won't know when some of your favorite videos have been uploaded, except of course you visit the site. So let's say you want to receive notifications from a specific program. Here are the steps using our YouTube channel as an example. The first step is to visit Channels TV's YouTube account, that's youtube.com slash channels web, or just search for Channels TV in the search bar. Next, subscribe if you're yet to do so. Then go to the specific program's playlist, in this case, Tech Trends. Click the bell icon. You'll find it somewhere on the top right, or you could just look around for it depending on the device you're using. A dialog box will then appear, allowing you to select receive all notifications or just for specific programs. With this done, you should start receiving notifications whenever a new video is uploaded. Also, you can always modify how you're notified by visiting Manage Settings. Hit the Save button.